Well, first let's talk about some coagulation chemistry basics. Colloids in surface water are negatively charged. So for the most part, when the water arrives at the treatment plant, it's full of non-settleable particles, uh, we call them colloids, that carry a negative charge. And they can't flocculate together unless that charge is neutralized because of a force called zeta potential. So what do we do? Well, we add positive ions to the water. And th again, the most common coagulant used is aluminum sulfate, although there are several others. There's ferric chloride, there's ferrous sulfate. There are some other uh, polyelectrolytes that can be used. But for our discussion here, we're gonna talk about using alum to add these positive ions that neutralize the negative ions. Once neutralized, the colloids begin to agglomerate and the flock size increases. And then most treatment plants will add some polymer to aid in the flock formation or to keep the flock together. Now, aluminum sulfate coagulation and ferric sulfate coagulation don't work well when the alkalinity is less than 40 milligrams per liter. And the reason this is is that the aluminum sulfate and the ferric sulfate combine with the minerals that make up the alkalinity in the water and they form a flock. So aluminum or alum will form aluminum hydroxide, which looks like a kind of like a snowflake in the water. And that aluminum hydroxide flock will then act to neutralize the colloids or attract the colloids to it and form even larger flock. So aluminum sulfate and ferric sulfate require alkalinity in the water in order for them to be effective. Well, once they've, the flock has formed to a size large enough to settle out, it is settled in the sedimentation basin or filtered out in the filtration process. Most treatment plants use trivalent coagulants because trivalent coagulants are 50 to 60 times more effective than bivalent coagulants. Now what we mean by trivalent coagulants is that those are coagulants that have three positive charges associated with them. A bivalent coagulant only has two positive charges and a monovalent coagulant only has one positive charge. And trivalent coagulants are a thousand times more effective than monovalent coagulant. Aluminum is a trivalent coagulant and so is iron. So you have your aluminum salts or your aluminum sulfate as a coagulant. You also have several iron salt coagulants, ferric chloride, ferrous sulfate, and ferric sulfate. So aluminum and iron are trivalent an example of a bivalent coagulant would be calcium hydroxide, and a monovalent coagulant would be sodium silicate. Well, now let's look at this chart that shows us the different coagulants that are commonly used. First is aluminum sulfate. Aluminum sulfate is the most commonly used coagulant, and it's often used in conjunction with a cationic polymer. A cationic polymer is a polymer that gives off positive ions once it's dissolved in water. Next is aluminum chlorohydrate. It's a, again aluminum based and it produces less sludge and is less corrosive than aluminum sulfate. Ferric chloride is the first of our iron salt coagulants and it's effective over a wider pH range than alum. So there are some applications where ferric chloride might be used rather than alum. However, it is very corrosive and it tends to stain the water treatment plant a rust color. Ferric sulfite, excuse me, ferric sulfate is similar to aluminum sulfate in that it requires alkalinity in order for it to be effective, or at least alkalinity above 40 milligrams per liter. And ferric sulfate is often used as part of the lime softening process. So 
So something you'll want to remember for your test is that ferric sulfate is often used with lime softening. Ferrous sulfate is less pH dependent than alum, similar to ferric chloride. Then there are some aluminum polymers. One particular aluminum polymer is called polyaluminum chloride, or PAC, and another is polyaluminum sulfate. Next on our list are cationic polymers, and these are large molecule synthetic polyelectrolytes. So these are man-made products as where aluminum sulfate and the ferric uh, salts are naturally occurring. Next is sodium aluminate, which is often used along with alum because it improves the alum coagulation process. And then finally, we have sodium silicate, which is used to make the coagulant aid activated silica. So sodium silicate is used by water treatment plant operators to make activated silica, which is added in addition to a primary coagulant to enhance the coagulation process. Well, this chart shows the different combinations of chemicals that can be used with coagulants to make the coagulation process more effective. You see that aluminum sulfate combined with caustic soda at a ratio of 3 to 1 is a common coagulant combination. Also aluminum sulfate with hydrated lime at a ratio of 3 to 1. Aluminum sulfate and sodium aluminate at a ratio of 4 parts aluminum sulfate to 3 parts sodium aluminate. And aluminum sulfate with sodium carbonate. And those ratios range from 1 to 1 up to 2 to 1. Ferric sulfate and hydrated lime at a 5 to 2 ratio. Ferrous sulfate and hydrated lime at a 4 to 1 ratio. Ferrous sulfate with chlorine at an 8 to 1 ratio. And then there's sodium aluminate and ferric chloride at a 1 to 1 ratio.